this video I'm going to show how to deal with cataracts on a CRT. This was a common problem in CRTs of the 1980s. 9 inch and 12 inch uh, tubes especially were notorious for this on terminals and the like. It's not a difficult thing to do, it's just quite dangerous because there is always the risk with a CRT that it could implode. And uh, because of that I don't recommend doing this on your own. Uh, I've done quite a few of these there is about a 20% chance the tube could fail. Um, so from this point on I will be wearing safety glasses, a safety mask and I've got a heavy duty smock on as well so uh, it probably wouldn't protect me entirely if the uh, tube does implode but uh, hopefully I'd uh, avoid the worst of it. So as I say I'll be wearing these from this point on and step one is to remove the tape that's around the outside of the join between the safety glass and the tube. So all I'm going to do is cut um, or run a knife around here, being careful not to score the tube. With glass it's usually quite strong until you make a defect in it. So if you scratch it or score it, that's a major weak point, so you need to be very careful not to do that. Uh, same with the bands that go on the outside, any metal work, that's all part of the um, strength of the tube, so don't try and take it off. If you do need to change the tube, you'll need to replace the brackets, but otherwise um, leave them intact. Uh, do not make any attempt to take the band off. Um, a, you'll never get it back on, but also that's part of the structure of the tube. Now the first thing I'm going to do, as I say, is take the tape off. Uh, what I'll do then is I've got a lab oven, so I want to get the tube up to about 110 degrees centigrade or so, uh, and then I can apply um, more localised heat very carefully to the safety glass, and in theory that will hopefully soften up the uh, adhesive and I should be able to uh, gently prise the safety glass off the tube. Uh, because uh, of the nature of glass it's important to heat it all fairly evenly, so I've got a lab oven and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put the tube in there for an hour or so to very slowly heat up uh, up to about 85-90 degrees and then I'll come back uh, put it back in this stand, uh, this is an insulated stand and then I'll use a heat gun to continue heating the top surface. What I'm trying to do is avoid um, any heat stress building up in the uh, overall structure. Now it's a bit unavoidable with this uh, arrangement because of the metal brackets they are going to expand a little bit um, but it will expand hopefully away from the tube and it's not going to try to squeeze the tube any harder. Uh, but I do need to be careful of that but uh, being in the oven at least most of the time it will be out of harm's way. So I'll go and uh, get that done, I'll get the tape off, get it heated up and then I'll come back and we'll start looking at the next step which is to try to locally heat the safety glass and remove it. Okay, the tube's been in the oven for about an hour. It's now up to about 80 degrees centigrade. So I'm going to continue to heat it with the heat gun, get the um, adhesive up to the point where it's starting to bubble, and then I should be able to prise the um, safety glass off. I won't video the whole thing. Um, the camera's kind of in the way, uh, but um, I'll show you as soon as I get the, the glass loosened. Okay, well that's the safety glass removed and all the resin taking off. I just need to cover this over now for a, an hour or so, let it cool down slowly. There's obviously no safety guard on this now, I hope you can hear me with the uh, face guard on. Um, so I need this to cool down fairly slowly. If it cools down too quickly the thermal shock could cause it to shatter. So I'm just going to put uh, several layers of uh, kitchen towel over it. I've also got a 100 watt heater in the bottom of this uh, stand and that's currently on. So once the tube has had a chance to cool down uh, a little bit I'll turn the heater off and um, then I'll let the tube cool down for another hour or so. Let it get down to room temperature. I can then use some solvent to uh, clean off the tube itself and also the safety glass. So the safety glass is uh, very hot at the moment but uh, this is the piece of safety glass that uh, we're trying to get off looks very manky at the moment because it still has a lot of uh, resin on it but um, once it's cooled down we can use some solvent to clean it off. This is the uh, offending material, you can see the yellowing as well, that's the yellowing we saw on the screen. 
and these little uh, growths are some sort of fungus that gets in there. The surprising thing is how thick it is and we will need to take that into account when we put the um, safety glass back on. If we don't take that into account then we'll end up with a tube that's not actually deep enough for the case. So I'll let this cool down, get back on camera and then we'll look at uh, cleaning the tube and refitting the safety glass. Okay I allowed the tube to cool down completely took about an hour and a half to cool. I left it covered while it was cooling down to make sure that there was no thermal shock and no chances that the tube would shatter. I used the thermal camera to keep an eye on it and once we got down to about 25-30 degrees then I, that was fine down to you know, pretty much room temperature and that means we're far less likely to uh, encounter any problems with it shattering. The material that comes off here is uh, fairly disgusting stuff but um, if you haven't done this then it absolutely stinks, um, smells horrible and it's a lot thicker than you might imagine so uh, you can see it's very opaque this is what we were looking through to try and see the picture which is why it looks so bad you can see that uh, towards the outsides it's very yellow which is why the tube looked yellow uh, around the outsides especially the top and the bottom and uh, this was across the entire tube face so um, as you can see some parts were very bad and also it starts growing this weird fungus after a while which is what the cataracts are and um, that's really what um, prompts us to have to do this. It's a bit of a pain having to get these off, it's uh, again not something I'd recommend you do if you're not uh, familiar with this process, it is quite dangerous. But once we've got this off uh, the next step is to clean the tube face, you can see I've given it a really good clean, it needs uh, one final clean before I put the uh, safety glass back on. I've cleaned the safety glass as well so that's now nice and clean, again I'll give it a final uh, going over before I refit it. Um, but we can't just put this directly onto the tube face for two reasons, one is because the gap between them is meant to be part of the safety feature to stop um, shock getting through the safety glass onto the tube face itself, uh, but also if we were to put this directly onto the tube face then the tube would be shorter than it was um, by the amount equal to the thickness of this material. Um, so in other words when we bolt it back into the chassis the front of the tube face would no longer come right to the front of the chassis. So what we need to do is put this back on using something to space it forward slightly. Now the material I used to reattach this is double sided foam so something like this and the reason I use this rather than epoxy or anything else is uh, if I ever need to get the cover off again uh, it's very easy to remove and of course it also seals around the perimeter so we'll use double sided tape and then once we've got the um, protective cover back on then we seal around the outside with some uh, clear tape. So I keep different thicknesses of adhesive um, foam and all we have to do is pick one that's the same thickness as the material we've taken off. So it's just a case of picking the right one. So this one appears to be the right thickness. So I'll be using this. A lot thicker than you might expect but um, as I say it has to match what we've taken off otherwise the tube won't be the right uh, depth and there'll be a gap or it won't fit into the uh, enclosure if we go too thick. Uh, also the reason I use black is because if you look at the uh, display at an angle you will be able to see the edge of this so if it was white it would look a bit odd and the reason we then put tape around the outside is you've no doubt looked at your pictures uh, hanging on your wall and sometimes you'll see you get these tiny little uh, insects can get in there through the smallest of holes and uh, if you don't completely seal around the outside then you'll get the same thing and um, it would be a real uh, shame to have these uh, little insects crawling about inside your display won't be quite as bad as uh, what we had uh, but if we seal it then at least we can make this um, new appearance last a lot longer uh, and of course because there will no longer be anything between the uh, protective uh, safety glass and the tube it should last a lot longer and in fact it should uh, in theory last the life of the tube so I'll get this um, cover plate back on, give it a good clean first, get the cover back on uh, and then I'll get back on camera, we'll have a final look at it before we uh, fit this back into the chassis. Okay well that didn't take too long, a lot easier than I expected, 
and this is now ready to go back into the chassis and uh, all I have to do now is see if it still works.